Welcome to the ninth in our Michigan Farm to ECE mini webinar series. Today I'm very excited to have Chef Becky Costanit of Baxter Child Development Center in Grand Rapids speaking about their strategies for planning and developing seasonal menus. Baxter does a really wonderful job of sourcing local food from Michigan farmers and I'm excited to share their work. My name is Abby Harper. I'm the Farm to School Specialist at the MSU Center for Regional Food Systems. And I just wanna introduce the webinar today by talking a little bit about the new child and adult care food program meal patterns. Uh, as many of you know, these changes are going into effect in October of 2017. Um, and there are quite a bit of changes, but a couple that I wanna focus on in particular that relate to local food purchasing are the fruit and vegetable requirement as well as the less added sugar requirement. Um, so there are a couple major changes coming, several relate to local food. Um, there's a much greater emphasis on fruits and vegetables and specifically diversity of fruits and vegetables, including separating out the vegetable component of the requirement um, in addition to limiting the amount of juice that can be served to meet this requirement. Many farm to early care and education programs start with local fruits and vegetables and connecting with local producers can be great, a great tool for learning about new products that you can serve in your program and getting access to fresher fruits and vegetables. As providers may worry about whether or not kids will be receptive to some of the new vegetables brought in, building local foods into your menu and including educational opportunities around these foods can help to make the new meal patterns and encourage a smooth transition for the kids. I also want to highlight the added sugar change. Um, with an increased emphasis on reducing added sugar, many programs may be looking to flavor alternatives such as fresh fruit added to things like low sugar yogurt and breakfast cereal. Um, and purchasing Michigan fresh or frozen blueberries, strawberries, melons, and other fruits can add flavor to breakfast and snacks. I think this webinar is especially appropriate given these changes, um, and I will now pass it off to Becky Quastini to share how she's using local and seasonal foods to create CACFP menus for Baxter Child Development Center. All right, take it away, Becky. All right, hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, <clears throat> so the next slide here, you can advance it for me, Abby. I, I did. You should be all set to go. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Um, so, yeah, so at Baxter, we've been able to do a lot of seasonal menu planning around local food. Um, so some of the pictures there are the, the apple crunch, the Great Lakes apple crunch that we did. And the one on the left, the actual little kid biting into a Michigan apple, that was just like the perfect perfect picture of local food. So we got our apples locally. Um, and you know, the season, the apple crunch is in the fall. So it's kind of nice. It's a seasonal food. Being in Michigan, you know, you're always surrounded by apples, which is great. Um, <clears throat> and then let's see, the next slide. Sorry, Abby, it's not going. There we go. Um, so the benefits of seasonal purchasing is the farmers tend to have lower prices on local food when you buy seasonally, which is really great for us um, as daycare centers and providers. So the one on the right is a picture of all of the local produce I got about mid-June um, from a local food hub, the West Michigan Farm Link. Um, it also being able to buy local really helps me to reduce a lot of the waste, which is where a big cost can come in, is if we're throwing a bunch of food away, um, then that you know it makes our cost go up. So buying locally, I can control the portion size a lot better. Um, and it also teaches kids about seasonality, especially in Michigan. We don't have you know strawberries that we can typically get all year round. So just making aware as kids grow older and they learn to buy their own food for their own families that um, just because a product is available all year on a grocery store it doesn't necessarily mean we have to eat it all year round because of the, the different costs. So buying you know seasonally and locally can be a lot more cost effective. Um, and a lot of the you know the opportunities to influence family health is really great. A lot of the kids are going home and saying hey we ate this and this and so parents are more um, inclined to put that in their own menus because they know that their kids are going to eat it because they're eating it here. And it just brings excitement to the center when 
foods come back that they haven't seen in a while. Um, you know, peaches and melons and watermelon, especially in the summer, they get really excited to eat it. So they're always excited for mealtime. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, learning seasonality, I keep this chart on my desk. It really helps me to plan my menus and to realize, to really focus on what is coming up into the season. So I know, um, you know, blueberries are coming out in a month or strawberries are gonna be coming out in two weeks. So that helps me to plan my menus with the seasons so that my, um, you know, my fruits and vegetables and some of my, um, you know, menu items are coming seasonally. Um, it's just a really great resource to have um, also to know when you should phase stuff out too, or realizing that, hey, this product is not in season anymore, so the cost might be going up, so we can substitute it with something that is in season, or that's kind of a staple year round, like carrots and potatoes in Michigan. Um, so the, I started swapping out some of, you know, the fruits and veggies. That's the easiest place to go seasonal and to go local. Um, it can be the most cost effective as well. So um, just swapping out, you know, frozen or canned products for seasonal things. Um, so, you know, strawberries especially, you know, getting the fresh fruit in there, fresh strawberries and apples and blueberries instead of canned items. Um, you know, really reduces the sugar content as well. Um, and then again, you have more control on the portion size, so you're eliminating some waste. Um, and then, you know, also, you know, summer comes around, you've got carrots and stuff. It gives you an opportunity to make some great dips um, for snacks. As also, the homemade fruit popsicles is something fun. So kind of towards the end of the week when you have maybe, you know, a couple cups of blueberries, you have some strawberries, you don't have enough fruit to serve for that one um, for that one thing is that you can make some homemade fruit popsicles. So what I do is just put all of the fruit in a blender and then I portion them into muffin cups and put them in the freezer. So that is a really great way to use some of that, that fruit that you have that you can't serve to the whole center um, and make a great popsicle for the summer. It's really great, the kids love it. Um, it can get a little messy, <laughs> I've heard from the teachers. So, but um, it's just a way to, to incorporate different fruits. Um, and so that's really great. Also with food experiences, when a new food uh, or a new fruit or vegetable is coming into season, um, a fun thing to have the kids do is to help you with it. So when green beans are coming into season, I'll have the kids help me, um, you know, break off the ends. So the more involved that the kids are with some of these seasonal foods, the more inclined they are going to be eat them. So if they saw them at around 10 o'clock and helping you know, me prepare them, then they're already gonna recognize that food when it comes on their plate and they're gonna be really excited to try it because they also had help in preparing it. So that's been, you know, and that helps the teachers too. It's kind of fun to go in there, do an experience with um, the teachers and with the kids. Um, and the teachers have a good time with it. You know, they learn something, I learn something. So it's just really fun um, for everybody to kind of get them involved. Um, and it helps me save a lot of time too. So it's, it's really fun doing those different food experiences um, and letting them see the food before it gets on the plate so that the plate is not the first time that they see it. Um, let's see. Let's, okay, so. Um, and then a second place too is after you kind of get some of those fruits and vegetables coming into your center, you can start using them more in different things. So at the very top left is actually a chicken salad that I that I made um, yesterday with some local chicken and some local asparagus. Um, I realize asparagus isn't in season right now, but through Cherry Capital Foods, they have a great program or a great supplier that they work with that um, when they have an abundance of fruits and vegetables, they freeze them into individually quick frozen or IQF pieces and it makes some of the stuff you can't get all year round more accessible. So again, so these kids are seeing it a little bit in the winter and then when it comes to summer and you have a lot of access to some fresh asparagus, it's not the first time that they're seeing it. We've got some rainbow carrots that are great. Um, 
And then also a lot of soups. I love doing soups in the wintertime. Um, I made a chicken noodle soup last week that I started to introduce some collard greens into it. So it's a great way to introduce some new items with some familiar flavors instead of just putting a bowl of collard greens in the classroom, you know, where some of the kids might not have seen it or it might be prepared different than the way that they're used to eating it. Um, you know, putting it in some chicken noodle soup is a, just a great way to get those greens in there um, with something that they've already known. And then I also started making homemade baby food for our center. So that's another way to get great local foods into the mouths of even our infants and starting to get them to like those flavors. So the bottom, we've got some squash and spinach and potatoes. It's also a great way to use up, again, if I have one potato or two sweet potatoes, that's not really going to do much for me, but those items can make a good amount of baby food when they're only eating two ounces. So again, it's a great way to just start them as young as possible, getting used to fresh, local, and seasonal foods. The next, sorry about this. There we go. Um, so where to start? So products that are available year round or mostly um, are apples. Apples are typically year round. A lot of greenhouses too year round offer different kinds of greens. Um, also, Potatoes and carrots and onions are something that can be offered year round too. And those are really familiar vegetables um, to kids. So kind of getting those vegetables in seasonally um, and locally can be a great place to start. And then products too that you can serve in whole form, you know, the less processed it is, um, the less expensive it can be. So blueberries, apples, strawberries, you can get whole apples in grab a you know a cutter and a peeler if you need and just you know slice them on site that can save some time as opposed to getting in the pre-sliced apples um strawberries too don't need a lot of prep especially when you get them in frozen they already have the greens cut off so it's a really quick easy fruit to incorporate and then blueberries too the kids actually a lot of times prefer the blueberries frozen they really like them frozen they're kind of like little little frozen blueberry treat. So they love eating the frozen blueberries. Um, and then just preparation tips, you know, developing recipes, you know, talk to your chefs and farmers. They're the ones that are going to know the best way to, to do these vegetables. A lot of vegetables that I will get in, I just um, cut them into bite-sized pieces and then I'll roast them with a little bit of oil into uh, an oven for about, at about 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. It brings out the natural sugars in um, the vegetables, so it's really tasty to the kids. The staff has really enjoyed it too. Um, and you know, just kind of whenever you're out to eat, look at look at some of the different menu items that the chefs are doing. You know, a lot of chefs who use local foods and use seasonal foods love sharing their ideas, love sharing their tips, and are always willing to talk to people about you know even where they source things too. So chefs can be a really great resource for getting new items on the menu and how to get seasonal foods into your menu. Alrighty. All right, so sorry, having some difficulties. Oops. All right, the PowerPoint has left my screen. <laughs> All right, so sorry, folks. Becky, I think the right slide is up. If you want to just talk about your menu a little bit, I can see the sample menu slide. All right, here we go. So we have our menu. So this is the menu from last year. 
So everything that is locally sourced um, is an asterisk. So again, apples are all year round. I love getting apples in. Um, they're just you know easy to use and the kids love apples. Um, I also will get in ap frozen apples, which I use to make applesauce. So you can see on 929. Um, and the apples I get in are already peeled and sliced. So it's a really great way to have you know, homemade applesauce without spending an hour peeling and slicing apples. So really trying to just utilize some of those resources that we have. Um, blueberry smoothie. Um, the kids love yogurt smoothies. Um, it's a great way to get in, you know, lots of fresh fruit into those smoothies. And I don't add any sugar, so I just use a plain yogurt. And the sweetness from the fruit, um, especially when fruit is in season, it's a lot sweeter. And so you don't need to add any sugars to it. So you're not adding any sugars, which is really great. Um, in September, for the Sloppy Joes, I was able to get in fresh tomatoes. So I just put them in a pan with some water and let them kind of reduce and used a blender and then blend up the tomatoes and made a great sloppy joe sauce from that. And then we have roasted potatoes and asparagus. Um, so yeah, September you're starting to get out a little bit of some of the seasonal foods, but it's also a great way to kind of, you know, put those foods in there um, when they're going out. Chicken noodle soup, again, it's fun to just put different uh, vegetables into the soup. So onions, carrots, and then you know, put some green beans, you know, add a little bit of green. I always like to do at least one green vegetable a day if I can to, to make sure that we're getting all the different colors in into the day. Um, a 926 for lunch, a vegetable stir fry um, with carrots and peppers and corn. And a lot of times um, eggplant is readily available. So I will put some eggplant in stir fry too. Um, which is another way to, again, kind of get a new vegetable in there so the parents will see that it's on the menu. Um, but sometimes the kids in a stir fry don't really know what they're eating. They just know that it tastes good. So, you know, kind of like, yeah, you had eggplant today. And, you know, and they're like, oh, we did. So that's also a way to, to get them to try new things, is, again, to mix them into other things that they already know. So it's kind of fun. Um, you know, and with the you know cucumbers are great just anywhere that i can plug in local fresh produce i do so it's you know obviously it's easier in the winter months um but with cherry capital foods and the food hub west michigan farm link that i use um, i can get seasonal foods um pretty regularly and when i can't then i can't and then we just go to some of our standby so it's been a really great way to bring in the seasonal foods so, so yeah. All right. So I think. So yeah. So another, some more, you know, ways to get started. Um, the very bottom point I think is good. Starting in the summer when local fresh produce is abundant, it's going to help save um, a little bit of money. So again, and, and just talking to farmers and finding out um, what they're gonna have that week and saying, you know, I a lot of farmers are really willing to work with um, daycare centers and, and knowing that, you know, we're not taking their product for profit. You know, we are trying to feed kids and we're trying to go local and we're trying to bring the, the little money that we have sometimes back into um, our local economy. So they're really excited to, to work with um, to work with me that I found, which is really great. Also, you can um, just start simple. Just choose one food item that you want to transfer over to local, whether it's apples or blueberries or potatoes or carrots. You don't have to do everything all at once. This has been, you know, a, a two-year journey for us. You know, starting slow, getting one food in and realizing, okay, this is good. It hasn't really made the budget um, go up and then getting another food in and another food and so you did you do not have to do everything all at once you know take it slow um and then um also chefs too you know if you have a couple of restaurants you like and you know that they do farm to table stuff um you know ask them where, where do you get your stuff from where where do you get your produce from what are some good farmers that you know they'll also know you know 
the the farmers that are great to work with and they're just I think can be you know because I am a chef they can be an underutilized source so I really think that you know there is a really great resource to use when it comes to because they're going to know where to find the best produce for the best price because they are trying to make money <laughs> so they are a really great resource um and then you know just um, I'm always here, you know, for questions, if you have any questions about anything. So, um, so yeah, so it's just, you know, I think the biggest thing is just start simple. You do not have to do everything all at once and just, you know, use that great toolkit um, that MSU has with the local farm or the local produce and what's coming out and really utilize that to your advantage. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Becky. Um, I just want to highlight a couple additional resources. So Becky mentioned that seasonal um, food purchasing guide that highlights when products are going to be available. That's on our website at my at my farm to school .msu .edu. I also want to highlight Cultivate Michigan. Um, Cultivate Michigan is a campaign out of the Michigan Farm to Institution Network, and it works to educate food service providers on Michigan seasonality. So it does this by featuring different products seasonally and then providing guides um, that include purchasing tips, preparation methods, and easy to follow recipes that highlight those featured foods. You can sign up at cultivatemichigan.org. And if you sign up, you'll get these resources in addition to colorful posters and other marketing materials mailed to you whenever a new product comes out. Um, you'll also have access to a community of providers that are looking to increase their local purchasing and access tools for tracking and reporting the amount of food that you are purchasing locally. It's a really great campaign to be a part of and really easy to sign up for at cultivatemichigan.org.